the Canadian agriculture sector has been experiencing a labour shortage for a number of years. And uh, I would say currently that labour shortage is really moving into a labour crisis where we're seeing um, farms not being able to find uh, enough workers to uh, put the regular inputs in that they would, for example, and produce as much uh, as they would season over season, um, as well as it's impacting um, expansion and things like that. So. Um, it's a bit of a tough time for finding enough employees, um, but it's also a really exciting time in the work that's being done um, and the uh, opportunities there are for people to work in the industry. Um, technology automation, digitalization are also having a big impact. And um, it's so it's kind of a balance between that labor crisis and then, uh, you know, getting the word out um, to attract more people to work in the industry with all the amazing opportunities there are. I don't think that there's any sector specifically or any commodity specifically that is well, um, you know, has enough workers or has been able to attract enough workers. Um, I would say any industry in Canada right now is facing uh, a labor shortage, no matter where they're located, whether it be urban uh, or rural. And uh, the majority of our work, obviously, in agriculture is rural based. So um, I wouldn't say that there's one uh, better suited than the other. I think all of the sectors are facing similar challenges. So we're currently in the field doing research to update that data. So we will have fresh numbers and uh, current numbers uh, by early fall. Um, so we'll be able to speak to that a little bit better. Uh, anecdotally, I would say that uh, what we're hearing from the impact of the pandemic and uh, what we're seeing across the whole Canadian labor market, um, we do anticipate those numbers to have grown, not to have gotten better. And um, But we will have that data available uh, shortly. Yes, absolutely. And we're also seeing, if you look at the average age of uh, a farmer or uh, a producer, it's um, only getting older. I think it's 56 to 57 is the average age. So we're seeing more retirements as well. And um, <clears throat> we do know that, uh, you know, from our stakeholders um, and our producers that that challenge where they may have been able to attract some workers, uh, you know, here and there, it's uh, just gotten worse, um, you know, in the last couple of years. Immigration is definitely a very important part of uh, the agriculture workforce um, for those commodities that uh, work with the seasonal agriculture worker program. Um, that's an essential program in providing seasonal uh, workers um, that, you know, come into Canada and uh, and work during the time that we have um, things like uh, vegetable and fruit production and then go home to their home countries uh, and work there in the winter. Um, we also have uh, uh, the you know other streams to bring in workers on a temporary basis and uh, we've just seen the expansion as well as um, of the agriculture um, pilot program um, to help support uh, immigration into the industry as well. What I would say that we're seeing now um, with the labor shortage is we are seeing commodities that may not have considered immigration or temporary foreign or the temporary foreign worker program as a source for labor. Um, now looking at it and, um, you know, it is an essential part either on the seasonal side, temporary side or pathways to permanency, depending on the commodity group and the area that you're in. The impact that uh, COVID had on farm labor, um, you know, certainly there was a, just from a domestic labor supply, there was a real shift in where people were working. And um, we did see quite a shift of people living, uh, moving out of urban areas into rural areas once uh, they were more able to work from home in their current roles. Um, what that did not do, it did not have uh, um, increased supply of labor in rural areas because most of those people kept the jobs that they had. Um, they just moved out of the city. Uh, another impact that we 
we saw with the uh, move to work from home is that people already living in rural communities that might be available for on-farm work now have opportunities to work from home for companies that might not be uh, located in their community. So that has reduced the number of workers uh, available locally as well. And certainly at the time the pandemic first started um, in spring 2020, there was a significant impact with access to temporary foreign workers and seasonal uh, workers coming into the country. And um, the agriculture industry worked very closely with um, the government to ensure that that slowdown um, of workers being able to come in uh, was addressed so that it didn't uh, have as much of an impact on the uh, production as it could have. Yeah, so uh, Kirk is not a lobby organization, but uh, we certainly uh, conduct our research and uh, connect in with industry and hear what industry needs. And it's kind of that industry voice of what's happening uh, across uh, the country. Um, we have been leading the National Workforce Strategic Plan for Agriculture and Food and Beverage Manufacturing for the last two years in partnership with the Canadian Federation of Agriculture and Food and Beverage Canada. This has been a very significant uh, um, undertaking in a really important way to identify the issues that are happening as well as actions that can be taken by industry as well as by government to address the shortages. And um, we are looking at uh, this issue as a very um, in a very broad way um, because we do believe that there's not one um, silver bullet that's going to solve this issue. Um, so if you look at the strategic plan, there's five pillars that industry has come together to develop. And uh, the pillars cover things like skills development, the perceptions of the industry, um, temporary and uh, foreign workers and immigration, um, skills, sorry, I mentioned skills already, um, digitalization, automation and workplace culture, as well as some themes around infrastructure, data, EDI, competitiveness and profitability and Indigenous reconciliation. Um, and so we really are looking at this in that broader way, thinking that, um, you know, we can have the best attraction and retention uh, program out there, but if we don't have the infrastructure uh, in place, for example, in rural communities for your workforce to live, it's going to be very hard to retain them. Um, same as uh, if the infrastructure is not there for high speed internet, um, some of the new technology is going to be very hard to implement in a um, on a farm or in production because you won't have that uh, technology to um, that internet speed to support it. So um, there are we are really trying to bring industry together so that we're all at the same table working together, not duplicating efforts, very aware of what each other is doing, amplifying the things that are working and uh, identifying where the gaps are and how we can address those gaps. Kirk is currently uh, conducting some research to look at uh, a few aspects of um, the impact of uh, technology, automation, AI on the farm and how things, uh, the, the flow of work. Um, one of those areas of research is going to focus on the barriers to adopting that technology. And uh, another area of research is looking at the impact of the people, uh, as you say, um, you know, will it truly impact the number of people that we need or will it change the skills of the people that we have um, to do the work on the farm? And uh, so we're really looking forward to uh, the results of that research. What we're hearing is that um, it doesn't necessarily change the number of people. It certainly does change the skills required of your workforce. So how do you then up? you know, you're facing a labor shortage already. How do you ensure that you can upskill your current workforce um, to be able to uh, respond and support uh, a workplace that has that technology and then attract the right people in with the skills um, going forward as well? I would say that yes, labor uh, and um, the workforce is the single biggest challenge uh, across the industry today. That's what we're hearing from our industry partners. And uh, certainly, you know, it's something that we're, um, you know, our mandate is to work to address that issue and to support uh, industry so that uh, it's not as much of an issue um, in the future. 
I would certainly say, you know, in the last 10 years, it's uh, become more and more of a, a number one challenge. I think it's been an issue for some time. Um, I would say that uh, over the last 10 years, it's just become more of an acute issue when we, as we see, um, you know, smaller families, smaller firm families, um, smaller populations in rural areas, less of uh, the, you know, typical thing that we used to see where in a firm family, um, the kids would, you know, grow up and take over the firm and stay in the industry. Um, a lot of farm kids are leaving the farm as well. Um, so it's just been something that's been growing uh, over, you know, the last number of years and uh, has really become an acute issue at this point. I think we're seeing an, an issue with uh, labor across the, every industry, urban, suburban, and rural, um, even with the increase of immigration. Uh, with COVID, there was uh, a dip in immigration as well, which kind of slowed down that workforce uh, supply for the whole country. Um, and we also are seeing a significant impact of the baby boomers um, retiring now that, um, you know, we kind of had a, a point where they stayed maybe in the workforce a little bit longer than was forecasted, um, but are now exiting um, and taking that retirement. So that's having an impact, I think, on every industry. And at the firm level, um, it is having an impact with where um, people are settling when they come to Canada um, and even the Canadian population as a whole. I think the stats are, um, you know, 90% of the Canadian population lives urban or suburban and uh, farm work is not in uh, urban or suburban areas. So, um, you know, doing work uh, in rural communities to attract people to come and live there, making sure that the services are there um, and the infrastructure is there to attract uh, that population and to raise awareness about the opportunities there are um, to work in agriculture is something that uh, our organization is really working on and uh, trying to help the industry with. I think that, uh, you know, it's a really the, the labor shortage is a really complex issue. That's why we have uh, tried to um, put it into a, a framework that is more manageable and actionable through the National Workforce Strategic Plan. Um, this isn't an issue that's going to be resolved overnight, and it's not an issue that is going to be resolved by just one action. So the more that industry can work together and come together um, to look at innovative solutions, uh, the better shape we'll be in in the years ahead.